There's a new way of charging your design clients that's taking the world by absolute storm. Designers are making millions of dollars every single year using the exact same skill set that you already have just by implementing one new process in their entire system. Now, this is going to sound like a no-brainer to so many of you. You're going to think, oh my God, if this is a brand new way of charging and it's making people a bunch of money, then I just want to dive right in. Let's get right into it. And in most cases, I would agree with you. This is a no-brainer for so many people, but I do think that there are a few problems with this brand new way of charging people people in the design world. To show you exactly what I'm talking about, we're going to be going through three completely different websites here that are taking the world by storm, especially the first one here. Now, this is a typical design agency here. Lots of features, lots of cool projects going on, but there's one very, very, very cool and different thing about this agency that I've actually showed before on the YouTube channel. But there's one different thing here. This is a membership site that has taken the world by absolute storm. And if we see from the other examples here, we can go into view pricing, scroll all the way down, and we see that there is a trend here. People are charging monthly subscriptions for Webflow design, for development, for maintenance, even if it isn't, if it doesn't have anything to do with Webflow, people are charging monthly subscriptions instead of charging the typical ways. Now, this is nothing new. In the world of design, there has been retainer-based projects since the first agencies ever started. In the world of pricing, there's three main different types of ways that you can do it. There's value-based pricing, where you charge the client and the project rather than a flat fee or just a basic fee. There is the dreaded hourly project and the hourly rate that you charge based on your time that you put in the work. So say if I work in 20 hours and I charge 10, well then do the math on that one. And then there's a pricing method that ensures payment over multiple months. And that is by contract. That is, if you can imagine being an in-house designer, that's considered a, a retainer, right? You're working for a person, you got a certain amount of hours, certain amount of payment coming up, and it's essentially the same exact thing. So why is this website right here in particular taking over the world? Why is there such a massive big deal about these new type of agencies, this member type of agency. This right here is exactly why people are making a big deal out of this. There is a Twitter user by the name of Brett from DJ and he runs this design agency called DesignJoy. Now these people are selling unlimited design requests and unlimited development requests of Webflow and different design packages like mobile apps, blog graphics, icons, literally anything that you can imagine. And this person is making almost $2 million a year as of recording this. And I'm sure in the future he'll be making more and it'll be a bigger thing and whatever it is. But this is exactly why people are freaking out. People see this and they say, I know how to design a website. I know how to do this. I know how to do that. Why don't I start charging a bunch of money for this similar service? And so, as I was saying, this sounds like a no brainer, right? You have a service, you charge a monthly rate, you're more secure and you grow your business. You get more clients through referrals. You have more time to grow your business. It all seems like a great, great idea. So where does this all go wrong? Now, don't get me wrong. I think there is a ton, a ton of benefits of doing a design subscription agency and I'm actually getting started with my very own. So keep an eye out for that one and we can talk about it later. But for now, there are a ton of pros that I think are beneficial for starting a design agency with membership rather than with a flat fee or value based or whatever it is. So number one, depending on how you actually structure it and depending on how you actually want to grow this agency, you have a bigger leverage to make more money. Doing a membership style of an agency is also great because you are more aware of what the next months are going to look like. There's gonna be less surprises, less ups and downs, and okay, maybe one month it's gonna be a bit of a dry season, maybe next one is gonna be bigger, but it's not gonna be the massive ups and downs that, that people are experiencing with design agencies lately. And this is a great, great way to sort of flatten that out a little bit. You know, okay, this month I'm gonna be making 15, okay, maybe 20, maybe back down to 17. And so it's more of a more of a smooth line rather than a big janky one. But one of the cons that I believe is extremely important to take a look at and maybe why you don't want to jump in right away into charging monthly services rather than a flat fee or a value-based pricing is mainly the control aspect to it. Now, if you've ever worked as a designer for a team or if you actually have your own business, you know that designing takes a ton of time and there's a lot of revisions and people go back and forth a lot. And that is actually in part your fault and your client's fault. Now, I'll get into how you can actually solve that, but one client from DesignJoy actually wrote a massive Twitter thread explaining the downfalls of the service. And so this person was saying that pretty much, although Brett from, from DesignJoy had this massive business making a ton of money, he didn't have time for this specific person. And if you check out the, the packages, it costs almost $5,000 a month. So not being able to give the time and day to each one of your clients to really take in that value and give them what's worth the $5,000, 
if you're not able to bring that to the table and if you kind of skip on that a little bit and you end up giving bad files and you end up giving late files and late designs, then you are doing a disservice to yourself, to the community, to the world of design because you're bringing bad work to the table and that honestly sucks. So there's a couple of morals to the story and I said that there is a way of fixing this, right? There's a way of making sure that your clients and you have better communication and that is going to be with systems of operations. If you can have automations with your clients and making sure that everybody's on the same page, then it'll be a lot easier and you won't need to go back and forth so much because everything will be outlined from the start. So moral of the story, if you're going to start an agency that is charging a membership or a monthly fee, just like these design agencies are, or this retainer sort of style, I would say the following. If you do want to get into it and you do want to take a look and make sure that you want to get into it, try to ask yourself, can you still deliver the same quality of work with the same timeliness with charging this membership status? So if you're going to offer this membership to maybe 10 clients that you're already working with and they all said yes, would you be able to make more money with the same amount of work? In that case, great, get into it, go ahead and get started, charge them a bunch of money. If it works out for you and it works out for your client, then that's the best benefit of, of this entire thing. It's more stable for you, it's more stable for them, and everybody wins, right? Everybody has a designer and everybody gets the work done. But if in the case that you have so much work with these unlimited requests and there is such a massive backlog in your work and you can't finalize it, you can't do any work because there's just so much going on, just like it happened to this person here, then don't do it, you know? take a step back, almost like de-evolve a little bit and think about it. What am I doing? Should I be doing this? Is this a right decision? And thankfully, what I've seen from this person is that this was only like a one-time thing and he actually scaled back his agency quite a bit to make sure that the quality he was giving was, was worth it in the end. So that's another grain of salt right there that you need to keep in mind. So keep that in mind when you're taking a look at these design agencies because it's not as easy and it's not as clear as, okay, I'm gonna be charging this amount of money, I'm gonna make a ton of money, it's gonna be super clean, super simple, because at the end of the day, it, it never really is, right? I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video very different from what I usually talk about, but I hope that you guys did enjoy it. If you guys want to see more videos just like this one, then do let me know down below. Subscribe, like, do all those things. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.